When I arrive in Bangalore, it's almost three weeks since Dr. Muhammad Hanif was detained. And it's still five days before his release. He told Australian police that he was flying here to be reunited with his wife and newborn daughter. My rickshaw driver, like everyone else I meet here, is shocked at the charges against Hanif. I'm on the way to visit Hanif's wife, Firdus. From the very beginning of his ordeal, she's protested his innocence. Very shocking news. Yeah, it is very shocking. And, uh, I think whatever Australian government has done is completely unfair. Yeah. 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 I arrive on a quiet day for Firdus. She's staying at her parents' home in a middle-class suburb of Bangalore. It's tradition here that a woman stays 40 days with her parents after the birth of a child. She's smiling. Mm -hmm. It's clearly been a long few weeks for her. At times, the house has been under siege by the Indian media. As soon as there's any news from Australia, the local media leap upon it and she comes out to answer their questions. I would just say that all the, whatever is the truth is coming out. This is a huge story in India. Each twist and turn is dissected by every newspaper and TV station in the country. But I didn't know that uh, the Australian uh, police are so stupid to charge him on something so uh, senseless. At this stage, the errors in the police and prosecutors' handling of the case in Australia are yet to be fully revealed. But it seems the Indian police also have their brief on Mohammed Hanif. I was handed this document and told it was the police dossier on Hanif. Under the heading, Organizational Setup, the entry refers to... Alleged links with Al-Qaeda. Under the heading Overall Assessment, it says, After having his education in Karnataka, Muhammad Hanif must have come into contacts with members of terrorist entities and assisted. Under General Information, it reads, Muhammad Hanif is suspected to have rendered assistance to the prime accused persons in the Glasgow airport blast attempt. It's not clear whether the purpose of this dossier is to set out mere suspicions to be investigated or actual allegations. If the Indian police do have any hard evidence, they're not revealing it. Still a recent one. Huh? Fresh in it's from Sydney, one. I've brought Fidus the latest oh, Australian newspaper. So, yeah, uh, this one. Uh, have you seen him before? Yeah. Not surprisingly, the way this case has gone, she has as many questions for me as I have for her mainly about the telephone SIM card Hanif gave his second cousin, Sabil, which was said to have been found in the burning car. This was later revealed as a key error in the prosecutor's case. No, no, the police, mm. did they know about this in the beginning only, or was it like after they knew and then they didn't want to reveal it? I guess it was something like that. Yeah. Because well. if they knew that, then they wouldn't have done so much. Firdus says some of the early reporting was fanciful. That he was familiarizing himself oh. with operation of planes, it's completely... He's scared to sit in a, on a roller coaster and how will he think of flying a plane? How did you first hear the news that he'd been arrested? I got a call from um, the Australian police only, I think. The, the, based here in India? Or no, no, Australia? from Australia. And what did they say? They say that, uh, they said that, do you know Hanif? Then I said yes. I said I'm his wife. Mm. Uh, and then no, he said this, and he said uh, that he has been arrested. One thing she doesn't understand is speculation in the Australian press that the government has a political motive for keeping her husband in detention. Yeah, I've seen those uh, uh, comments in the news, in the news websites and all that. It's because of the elections and all. But I don't understand how. What do they gain from this in the elections?
What, how do you feel when you hear, when you, when you first read all of this stuff? How did it make you feel? <laughs> really very angry because, and because the first time all this is happening in a family. Mm -hmm. And it was really, you know, I was really hurt mm -hmm. seeing all these things. I'm sure. And, but now you say it's getting a little bit better because yeah. slowly the... The truth is coming out. Mm -hmm. Hanif studied here at this medical college. His teacher, when he began in 1997, was Dr. B. R. Ramesh. He's now the principal of the college and says he was taken aback when he first heard his former student was caught up in a terrorist case. The first time it's happening, so it is a total shock to us. Hmm. And in fact, we did not understand the implication at that particular point of time. May have made entries the Indian media diary. are quick to pick up on news later proven false that the Australian Dr. Federal Hanif. Police had written Almost the names of Hanif's terror suspect's cousins in his diary. In a startling claim that is further likely to fuel allegations that the Australian police are perhaps trying to trump up charges against detained Indian doctor Dr. Hanif Muhammad, his lawyer now claims that the police may not have been quite straight with the evidence. This is the house that Hanif's family used to rent. This is second house. Last one. Which one? He stayed here when he visited them from England, where he worked as a doctor before moving to Australia. This is one bedroom. Good family, he has been trapped. Mm. What we personally feel is mm. he has been trapped. Unlike other parts of India, Bangalore has very little experience of terrorism. It's India's IT capital and not known for its religious extremism. But after the failed terror plots in Britain, people here are worried that amongst the large Muslim minority, there are terrorist elements at work. Hanif's second cousin, Kafil Ahmed, was in the car filled with gas canisters driven into the passenger terminal at Glasgow Airport. He's now fighting for his life with burns to 90% of his body. Kafil's brother, Sabil, is also in detention in the UK, charged with withholding information on a terrorist act. After the arrests in the UK, the Bangalore police brought their mother and sister in for questioning. The results of their interrogation are not known. The big question is, how much did Mohammed Hanif know about the Ahmed brothers' activities? I have never spoken to Kafil. He never stayed with us in the UK. So, with Sabil, uh, he used to come to our house during weekends. Uh, he used to stay in Liverpool, and we also used to stay in Liverpool. So, he used to come during the weekends. Did your husband ever talk about, you know, them being radicalized or anything like that? Never. No. They were very simple people. That's what even I. That's what I heard from, from my husband. Did you hear about different, you know, people they were mixing with in England or anything like this? Maybe I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's up to us to talk about. It. It's, maybe. But it was handing his SIM card to his second cousin Sabil that first landed Hanif in trouble. Firdus confirms what her husband told the Australian police that he'd tried to contact the British police yeah. with this information. So he did try to call the UK investigators. He did? As soon as he heard about it? Yeah. And told them that he'd given them his SIM card? Yeah, he wanted to tell them, but mm. it seems that he didn't pick up the phone or something, the person whom mm. he tried to call. Mm. In fact, my husband was trying to help the police, and the police have put him back and this thing. Kafil and Sabil Ahmed are from an affluent, well-respected family. Their names are proudly displayed on the front gate. They prayed at the mosque right in front of their house, but apart from that, they kept to themselves. किसी भी यहाँ से लोगों को पूछें कफील सबील के बारे में ये कहेंगे कौन से ता किसी से मतलब मिल जुली जो है बातचीत या मिलन सार की कोई बात यहाँ पर हम लोग but they are good, innocent, but we don't know about uh, their extra activities. If he is wrong, then he is wrong. 
मतलब उसने किया गलत है तो उसे मजहब से नहीं जोड़ा जाए Hi Peter I'm Fidus from in Bangalore It's Wednesday and things are looking up for Fidus She's on the phone to Hanif's lawyer in Australia Peter Russo who tells her that the director of public prosecutions has taken okay. up the matter He's the boss of all the prosecutors in the Commonwealth okay. in Australia Okay He's going to review um the case against uh Mohammed Okay All right so but we just got to wait and see what the outcome of that is. Okay. So have the journalists been driving you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> 48 hours later, news comes from Australia that the charges have been dropped. Once again, the media descend on Fibu. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still happy that he's finally that he's been proved proved innocent. So, how long do you expect it to take now before you see him back home? Two or three days. Two or three days. That's very you soon. You expect him back home in two or three days? Yeah. Did, did you realize that people are calling for the resignation of the police chief and all kinds of political fallout in Australia? Yeah, I did. What do you think about that? I don't know. <laughs> It's there. It's just thing I don't. It's there. It's the their uh, this thing. Internal business. Yeah. Would you, would you, would your husband now want to work in Australia again or in any other country now? I don't know. We have discussed this. Has the external affairs minister been in touch with you? As she goes yeah, yeah. in, the national wire service misinterprets the decision. Oh. Read, read. He has been proved innocent. Uh, she thanked the thanked the Indian government and the Prime Minister in particular. as well as the ministry of external affairs for all the support so a lot of shock and of course bangalore is relieved right now but then looking back it seems just a bit unfair as the media's let in to get the all important shot of fidus with her baby across town at hanif's family home his mother and sister are receiving visitors mujhe bachche ko pa kar bahut 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 khushi hui से बढ़कर सारी दुनिया की दौलत मिल गया सर बहुत खुशी खुशी मिल गई मुझ पर What about you? your neighbors or friends? Neighbors. Neighbors. What what do you think it's been a long month, huh? Uh, I'm very thankful for Australian citizens and those who have helped so they have uh, involved in the sign they have processed protested everything they have supported in any case. W- will you be hoping for an apology from the Australian government? You you want to, them to say yeah. sorry? Yeah. Because uh, the, he is very innocent. Mm-hmm. From uh, he has uh, gone through mental uh, torture and all physical. Uh, mm-hmm. So they have to apologize mm-hmm. because he is a uh, right person. He is he is not in a wrong way. Mm-hmm. He is a true person. Yeah. And, and th- because I think the police today said they will will not be apologizing. Mm-hmm. But It depend on them, but they have to apologize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Will you be looking for some kind of an apology from the Australian government or some compensation or anything like that? No. I want my husband back that is enough for me. That's more than enough for me. <laughs>